All right. Thank you. So let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so our meeting hopefully will end in one hour and 30 minutes. <laughs> But I'm very bad at time management during our meeting. This it has been our experience that during our meeting, we usually end up at two hours or more. Um, yeah, so, but hopefully, yeah, we can. <laughs> and then, um, so our objectives for this meeting, uh, one is that uh, we will provide you updates no, from the hub. Uh, updates about our existing projects, updates about the, the, the people attend or participating in the global meetings from our region and uh, and more. And then uh, then second, uh, the presentation of our draft uh, C region strategy. Um, a lot of you have participated in the virtual and in-person um, meetings to discuss the, or we had our workshops <laughs> on the development of our region strategy. Hopefully uh, by end of our, by the end of our meeting, we will be able to adopt it. And yeah, it, so it become an official regional strategy. And of course, this is what I'm excited also is that we would like to hear from you. So every time we have our meeting, so, I, we we really give or we will really ensure that we give time to POs to share uh, updates also from there from your end. So this time we will allot time for POs attending the global policy meetings to provide updates. Not all the POs uh, will be requested because um, we have a limited time, but um, uh, we have requested several POs and then. We also have our year-end meeting when, in December, and then we will request again more updates from the peeps. So that's for our agenda. And then, uh, okay. So uh, thank you again. So I think there are already um, attendees. So in our chat box, so we have from EDs, from Echo Waste Coalition, from Nexus 3, uh, then CGPED, from Ban Toxics, from CAP, Malaysia, uh, Nexus 3, full force, the Nexus 3, thank you so much. I'm seeing uh, several staff from Nexus 3, thank you so much. And also from Wanjin Institute, uh, then, uh, Ecoton, Rafika, uh, thank you for attending. I think this is my first time to see you. Hopefully, I will see your face later. We'll have a photo up. <laughs> and then Bella uh, of ISEL Indonesia. And I think we also have, wait, so let me just uh, check. So I will stop screen sharing first. So we will see all the names. If you can open, can you open your video now? Let's have a photo opportunity this time. Angus, you're here and also fun. Um, let's have a photo opportunity this time. Yeah, okay. And P, you're here too, Tika. Okay, so I'll just take a photo. All right, let's have one more. One computer is not open. Uh, Bunusa, two, I mean, two, Bunusa and Hatija. If you can open your video so we can see Hatija, your name. Hatija, two. Yeah. Two. yeah, there's a two Hatija and the one is already open. <laughs> okay, okay. Hang on, one, one more person entering. Hang on. Yeah, I yeah. Jia Cheng. Jia Cheng, yes. Yay. Wow, full yeah. house. Okay. Okay, so we'll we'll wait for Cha Cheng to open his video and then we'll have a photo. Hatija, your picture is oh, where is she? 
there's one more. If there's okay, can someone admit? Uh, is uh, uh, yeah, ka? I admit it. Yeah, it's uh, from Dita Pratiwi. It's not yeah. Yay! Thank you, Jacheng. Can you open your video? We want to see your face. <laughs> It's lovely to see you, the faces. Yeah. <laughs> Angus, we miss you. Happy to see you again. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah, so we'll yeah. wait for Hatija and the other one to open the video and we'll have a photo again. Chacha, happy to see you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Good to see you. Okay, so we'll wait. Uh, if you can open your video. Uh, so now we have we have two two slides because Isna is on the other side. <laughs> because Hatija yeah. opened two accounts, yeah. All right. Okay, so let's have a photo. One, two, three. Okay. Yay. <laughs> One more time because Isna is looking the other way. <laughs> Sorry. <Okay. laughs> yeah, it's all right. Okay, let's have one more. One, two. Are you Isna? <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> so much. Okay, so we'll share the photos later. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, Thank yeah. Thank you. All right. So let me share my screen again. <laughs> so, oh, sorry. So this is not one stop. Ooh, international visitor. <laughs> okay. So this is our agenda again. We have three. Hopefully we'll be able to finish this. And then, um, yeah. So now we will go to updates from the C Hub. So, but just in case if you have questions, just feel free to um chat uh, to type it in the chat box so you can be acknowledged. Thank you. So just a very uh um quick updates from the C Hub. So for 2022 and 2023, so these are the projects funded by IPEN and also GiveWell. So there's another project and uh co-implemented with IPEN. So we have these projects on PFAS in clothing and PFAS in food packaging. I think um, there this, uh, as for the updates, uh, Yutka, the project expert uh, or, and, or in charge, has already met with the POs involved with these projects. And yeah, uh, hopefully by October, all the reports will be released. And then uh, for the MCCP, we have uh, two POs uh, in our region involved in this project. This is the medium chain uh, chlorinated paraffins project. So um, we're still waiting for the RIS, the project in charge, a project expert in charge to provide us update, hopefully soon. It's just that there's really a lot of policy meetings this year. And then uh, for RDF, um, Earth Thailand has already submitted their report and we're just waiting for the release of the report. <laughs> and then for HHP, we also have one PO. Uh, this is also an ongoing project. And then for the plastic CSR report, because there's all, all, only one um, uh, project per region. So we have one PO involved in this and they've already submitted their draft report. And then for the lead chromate listing, so we have uh, one PO uh, involved in this project, then women and chemicals, uh, one also. This is also related if you've, if you've heard about the updates on uh, chemical industry in, in Vietnam. So this is the project all about. And then lead paint study, we have two POs involved in this project. Then also oh, there's another women in chem chemicals and then the low pops uh, content level. So this, this is also about to end or has already ended. So we also have two POs from our region involved in this project. And we have the youth for toxic free future. So there are two POs but uh, involved in the agreement, but uh, 
technically we have four POs involved because one uh, project is co-implemented by three POs. And then with the Give Well project, so one PO, uh, this is already, I think, the um, continuing project, and this is already a, an extension. So we have one more PO, PO left uh, implementing uh, the Give Well project on lead paint study. So all in all, from 2022 to 2023, we have 13 projects, and that's 10 to 16 POs, which means that because there are also POs with uh, two uh, projects, so we have 10 to 16 POs. And covering six countries for 22 to 2023. And then um, also just to mention that uh, I-10 might uh, launch the TF, the Toxic Spree SDGs projects for 2022 to 2024 soon. So I will also update you and uh, hopefully uh, more uh, POs will also be uh, interested and then will apply to the project. Um, yeah, for the IPEN Youth Cocos, uh, I've requested the, the POs involved to provide us with the updates where, with our line up activities uh, later on. But for this, so we have two projects in the region, two agreements, I mean, and then we have ongoing recruitment of IPEN Youth uh, Cocos members. So hopefully, hopefully, uh, those who are youth, I'm seeing arm <laughs> piece. Uh, we have uh, lots of uh, a youth uh, in our region that can be a very good addition to the IPEN Youth Caucus. So hopefully you will be you will actively uh, participate in the IPEN Youth Caucus. And of course, uh, we have the ongoing uh, selection process of IPEN Youth Caucus co-chairs. So we have two applicants from our region. I'm really praying and hoping, if not two, we'll have one from our region that can be the IPEN Youth Cocos co-chair. Yes, so let's hope for that. <laughs> and then of course, um, we are very thankful to the Wanchin Institute for Occupational and Environmental Health and the uh, funding partner, the Korea Financial Industry Foundation. So we have seven POs from our region involved in the second um, and the EDC Asia 2 project, and then uh, covering four countries from our region. But all in all, because this is also, there are also POs from the South Asia region, because this is EDC Asia. So there are also five POs from the South Asia and also covering four um, countries. So yeah, we are thankful and we hope for the success uh, of this project. Yes, thank you very much, VOA. Wan Kim and Po Yun are here. They're very much um, involved. And then, I mean, uh, very accommodating <laughs> in, um, yeah, in accommodating uh, POs who would like to join the project. So thank you. Thank you very much to the Wanchan Institute and the Korean Financial Industry Foundation. Um, okay. So those are for the projects. So my next update uh, will be on the global policy meeting. So this year, it's been crazy because I think so far, this is the year with the most number of meetings. And then uh, so far, we have this. So as you can see, from January to December, or from January to June, there were already five meetings happened. The science policy panel last January to February in Bangkok, followed by the open-ended working group on Basel last February 21 to 23, then the SICAM 4.2 in Nairobi, and then the BRS COPS in last May 1 to 12 in Geneva, and also the INC2 on Global Plastics Treaty, which just uh, ended. So from May 21, uh, 29 to June 2. So these are the policy meetings and we have uh, representatives from our region to these policy meetings. So I've also requested several uh, POs to provide their updates and also reflections on attending the policy meetings. So later on, we'll have time for them uh, for their sharing. And then uh, there will be a break. <laughs> for policy meetings from July to August, but on September, there will be the ICCM5. So this is also related to SICAM. And then the pop 
PRC uh, on October 9 to 13, the Minimata COP 5 on November on October 30 to November 3 in Geneva. Then there will also be the Global Plastics Treaty INC3, you no, know, so third meeting, second meeting for the year. So that I'm not sure if this is accurate, still accurate, end of November. And then uh, in December, the science policy panel uh, from December 11 to 15. And uh, I think that the, the venue has been confirmed to be in uh, Jordan. So yeah, so these are the policy meetings uh, for 2023. And we are hoping to uh, have uh, to maintain that we will have representatives to these meetings from our region. Um, so yeah, so these are the meetings and the, in terms of number of rep, uh, participants, so the science policy panel meeting last uh, January 30 to February 3, it, I think was the biggest number of participants that we have in a meeting because it's also very near to us. It was conducted in our region. So we had 11 participants from seven countries uh, during that meeting. And then for SICAM, we have we had two participants and then uh, BRS COPS. So we have five participants, two from Thailand, and we have three from China. So we're, we, I'm happy to know that we have um, uh, POs from China who participated in the uh, BRS and also actually organized a side event. And then um, for the Global Plastics Treaty, we had five participants from two countries. So I just want to say also that because of that, IPEN did not fund all these participants. So like, for example, for SICAM to INC2, we usually like one, only one participant per region, per region, per region is being funded. It's just that um, IPEN also recommends for funding. For, to UNEP for funding. So we have like two or more participants. But um, yeah, hopefully we'll have, uh, we will be able to maintain like two or more participants from our region to policy meetings. And because of that, that this is why also we are requesting POs to also report back. So all the POs will also be um, updated on what happened to the policy meetings and uh, also the their reflections. Okay, I hope you can still hear me. I can. I I, I just see my face in here. <laughs> yes, we can hear you. Yeah, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, so those are the updates from the hub. So, any questions or additional input? Yeah, it's good so far. Yay. Okay, thank you. So now uh, we will proceed to the presentation of the regional strategy. So just as a background, so we had several meetings and we had workshops conducted to be able to complete the draft regional strategy. So like, for example, last year, uh, August 2022, we had our virtual workshop. And I'm so happy that uh, several POs attended and countries were represented during the workshop. And then from that workshop, we had another small group uh, review of the workshop outputs. This was before we went uh, with the, this was before the in-person workshop in Bangkok. So we had our small group uh, online meeting to review the, the content of the workshop, uh, of the content of the draft strategy and the lineup, no, the, 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 the workshop lineup. And then uh, after the science policy panel, we took the opportunity to meet the small group again, representing uh, several POs from eight countries or nine countries. And we had an in-person workshop in Bangkok. So that was in February, 2023. Then after the in-person workshop, we requested again, I requested again for a small group meeting, those who attended the virtual and also the in-person workshop for a review of the draft 
regional strategy. So this was in March 2023. And then hopefully today, uh, after the presentation, we'll have the discussion and adoption of the regional strategy. So this becomes the official uh, regional strategy. Okay. So as to the content, so I, I also noted below that a regional strategy is a living document. So the texts that you will read or you will see in the region in the draft regional strategy are not are are already content of the regional strategy. But if there will be new issues, new strategies that we will be identified, uh, we will still add we can still add it to the document. So it, it will be a working document and a living uh, strategy, living document for, for our region. Okay, so um, in our regional strategy, we identified what are the problems per country that are related to waste and toxic chemicals. So as you can see here, um, in the next few slides, we have listed here the problems per country identified by the representatives from the country who attended the, the meetings and the workshops. So like, for example, for Cambodia, so these are the issues they have identified. So waste disposal, pesticides, plastic waste, chemical and products, climate change, toxic waste for, from electronic industry. And these are also the issues identified uh, by the representatives from China. So as you can see, chemicals and products, waste incineration, plastic additives, climate change, treatment of mercury, cadmium, contaminated sites, chemical liquid, chemical ship residual, and the waste disposal. And as you can see also in the left part, um, there are also notes on like if your country is already a signatory or has already ratified or a party to the international uh, all multilateral environmental agreements. So, because it will also guide us in our work uh, in the future or existing work when we approach with our government. So, if they support or not the multilateral environmental agreements that IPEN is also supporting. And then for Indonesia, these are the issues identified for solutions to waste management, WTE, RDF, chemicals and products, ecological child rights, toxic waste trade. Plastics, you know, the whole the full life cycle of plastics, heavy metals, mercury and lead products, pesticides, climate change, and the transparent pollution control. For Japan, also uh, so far, these are the issues identified based on the work of the POs uh, in Japan, like mercury, mercury contamination and the chemical sand products and uh, while they have existing PRTR law, I think they're now working on also ensuring that there's strict implementation on the PRTR law. Then from Korea, so we also have this uh, identified problems. So problem on chemical hazards shifting, subcontracting, the exposure to toxic chemicals in semiconductor industry, uh, toxic chemicals in production and also in products. And then policy making for sound uh, chemical management, climate change, air pollution, and also plastic use. For Malaysia, these are the issues identified: microplastics, microbeads, and cosmetics, e-waste, incineration, mercury in dentistry, pesticides, uh, cadmium, nanoproducts, and toxic additives and plastics. In the Philippines, these are also uh, the issues identified: waste trade. Uh, uh, waste to energy, informal e-waste, plastic recycling, unregulated, unregulated highly hazardous pesticides, chemicals and products, uh, trade of chemicals and chemical containing products, then chemicals and plastics and climate change. And also in Thailand, so these are the issues identified. Sorry if I'm, I read <laughs> I'm so fast, but these documents will all be provided to you also. So for Thailand, the PRTR policy, so there's ongoing uh, policy lobby for a PRTR law in Thailand, industrial pollution, chemicals and products, waste trade, and also the RDF. For Vietnam, so this, these are the, the issues identified, chemicals and products, plastic waste, uh, chemical safety at work, chemicals in the production of electronic components, 
mercury in small scale gold mining and uh, HCTS and agricultural production. <clears throat> so all the issues identified per country, we ident we had we had a workshop and we identified what are the common issues, what are the major issues that we are working in our region. So these are the six uh, identified issues. No? So like, for example, for waste pollution. So all the issues related to wastes are here. So like toxic additives, microbids, the WTE, RDF, the waste trade, and so on. So all these are related to waste pollution. Then second major issue is the chemicals and products, lead, mercury, PS, EDCs, e-waste. So they, they, they are all related to chemicals and products. Then highly hazardous uh, pesticides in agriculture and households as the third major issue. And then fourth, uh, industrial pollution. Number five, we also identified emerging issues and concerns like air pollution and the critical minerals. And number six, the concern of need for more capacity building, like for example, on ecological child rights, citizen science, gender, and youth mainstreaming. All right, so after identifying all the major issues, during the meetings and workshops, we, we have come up with this overall goal. So this is the overall goal of our regional strategy that by 2025, IPEN, C, and EA participating organizations are unified in addressing toxics, waste, and the climate crisis towards environmental rights, justice, and sustainability through advocating for the passage and implementation of policies and regulations. And then these are the objectives adopted from the IPEN global I, the IPEN global strategic objectives. So we've decided to uh, adopt the four major objectives of IPEN. So under these objectives, we have identified the strategies and activities here and also the POs are currently working, but it does it does not necessarily mean that only these POs are working on this. We have a lot of POs. It's just that these are the POs I think who were present during the workshop and meeting. So we can add more POs working on this. Uh, so yeah, so these are the, for waste pollution, the strategies identified are in the next three years. So by the way, so we are, the, the time frame for our strategy is from 2023 to 2025. And then for the next three years, these are the strategies that we have identified. So mapping of e-wastes, uh, monitoring of Stockholm Convention implementation, continuing advocacy to address plastic pollution, uh, continuing advocacy against WTE and chemical recycling. And then for highly hazardous pesticides, so um, the, the strategies identified are trade mapping of Paraquat, mapping of governing laws on Paraquat and disposal of HHPs packaging, and also identify the use of pesticides in household products, product sampling and household sampling. And then for the EDCs or endocrine disrupting chemicals, health monitoring, biomonitoring, and the continuing campaign and policy lobby on EDCs national and HSCM. And I think this, this is where also the, the, the project with the Blanchard Institute, the EDC Asia project is very much aligned. Okay. Uh, can you speak someone? <laughs> are you still there? <laughs> we are still here. We are listening. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. Go on. <laughs> Thank you. And then for the chemicals, <laughs> for the chemical and products like lead, mercury, cadmium. So these are the strategies identified. So my mainstreaming products. So like compiling a regional report for heavy metal in products, then promote countries to adopt standards and comply, and then continue advocacy on lead safety policies. And then for the ASGM and other contaminated sites, uh, we 
there are strategy, strategies identified include development of and characterization uh, development of characterization of contaminated sites and then mapping of contaminated sites. So there are a lot of contaminated sites in our region from country to country, and hopefully we can work on this. So that, that's for objective two. Now for objective three, this is on the advancement of SICAM or your strategic international policies and initiatives. Sorry. So this here, uh, the updates are partic our participation to the global meetings and also our contribution to the implementation uh, will also come in. So, but in our region, we have a, we have a very specific uh, law that we would like, we have identified identified and would like to work on, like the PRTR or the emission inventory. So these are, we have targeted to conduct lots of activities on this research, knowledge sharing, uh, policy lobby. And then for campaign for ratification of Basel Ban Amendment, since this is also a very serious concern in our region, so we will continue to work on this. Uh, information sharing on transboundary movements of wastes and so on. Okay, so next. Um, also, in objective three, the multilateral environmental agreement. So the we we have identified the strategy of continuing lobbying, negotiation, and monitoring activities. No, in our country, if our country will ratify and will also act on implementing the multilateral environmental agreements, like the BRS, the cycle, oh, the Basel, Rotterdam, Stockholm Convention, and hopefully with the Global Plastics Treaty, our countries will also uh, support. And then, um, yeah, uh, lobby engagement, lobby and negotiate with relevant stakeholders, especially our government uh, delegations to the uh, global policy meetings. And then development of common statement tools and documents focusing on a safe and clean environment for dissemination to stakeholders, including targeted messages for the youth. So we have identified these are strategies in the next three years, and we will all work on this. So for objective four, and I think this is the last, um, this is for the capacity building. Um, as of now, we have 51 POs, and hopefully we will welcome one more uh, or one additional PO in our region. But in terms of capacity building, we hope to provide um, capacity building on uh, the general understanding of global frameworks, you know, like, for example, PRTR and other uh, existing multilateral environmental agreements. Uh, we also have identified capacity building on multimedia and advocacy, organizational development for POs, for new POs, and uh, capacity building on citizen science. And for relevant stakeholders and communities, uh, we will also work on uh, provi providing venue for capacity building for government stakeholders and media and relevant stakeholders on a lot of issues like waste trading, chemicals, international policies, also citizen science, and uh, continuing our efforts on conducting dialogues and events for youth organizations. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to stop screen sharing because I will ask you if there are questions to the regional strategy. If there are additional inputs that you would like to be included in the regional strategy. Yes. <laughs> yes, I mean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chinky. Uh, do I need to open the camera? Yes, please, okay. so we can okay. see okay. you. Thank you. Hi, <laughs> Ibu. Happy birthday, belated. Uh, okay. <laughs> and uh, congratulations to Earth for the ratification. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm thinking in the well, what I'm going to say is that about about the plastic in the strategy paper. Okay, plastic in the strategy paper is under the waste pollution. Ah, yes, the waste pollution. 
therefore it is under the uh, waste management issue and not as uh, during that time we are not yet we are we are really not yet that uh, um uh prepared or or should i say we have uh we have um uh, uh low understanding on the plastic issues that uh plastic is not on a waste management concern but uh, as a health issue so we so so although in the, the i'm just figuring it out where would we place the plastic as a chemical as as a health and chemical concerns uh and not under the waste management concerns because in the in the issues and concerns it is under the waste pollution but under the objective it falls under the reduction of hazardous chemicals so but not specifically on there's no specific um item or bullet for plastic uh i'm i'm coming from the 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 current INC <laughs> on 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 some uh, INC framework, uh, so so that's one. And then on the second on, on my second um, my second suggestion is as part of the capacity building is uh, would it be okay if we include as our regular capacity building the IPEN quick views, um, especially if there are quick views being issued in every um, policy activities or, or scheduled um, activities that we have maybe we could uh, have we, there are lots especially on the options paper so maybe it could help everyone to understand also so so there <laughs> also the way speakers there's no the, the way speakers help because all okay. is already talking about just transition yeah um, I I am tempted to answer you, but I think you. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna throw back the questions to all of you. <laughs> I just need to consolidate and facilitate <laughs> whatever is the what uh, whatever will be our agreements. I have uh, an because I also remember uh the other night there was a staff meeting. I pen a staff meeting and. We also realized that the plastic strategy has not been integrated in the IPEN strategic plan. And so during the staff meeting, there was an action point to have another discussion and uh, to really integrate it in the uh, in the strategic plan so with that also i'm also i also re i also realize that there is also a need to do that in our region for us to really have a serious discussion on the plastics of work so i see you Yun's hand please go ahead <laughs> Yes, uh, thank you, Eileen, for bringing this up because uh, I think we discussed it also in Paris uh, to some degree that IPEN actually already have the platform for fossil fuel. Um, if you remember that, there is an IPEN policy statement on fossil fuel. Uh, it was developed in 2018 um, because of the fracking and so on. Uh, but I spoke to uh, I can't remember Bjorn or Vito about this, uh, that we have to revisit uh, that IPEN um, policy statement on fossil fuel to elaborate more the petrochemical industry. So not only fossil fuel, uh, but also the petrochem um, strategy. So probably that could, once they, once we review or revisit uh, the IPEN fossil fuel strategy, uh, that should be incorporate the petrochem then it will be it should be discussed at the regional level then include in the ipen strategy um yeah th there is a long process about that but we have to go through all of that um to make sure that this idea is accepted by by everyone thank you thank you 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 and and also for the second question on the uh, capacity building on quick views. So I also I also intend to ask if uh, because there there are um, orientation or meeting 
conducted by IPEN, global meetings conducted by IPEN before the, the global policy meetings. But as we all know, that is always that late for our time. <laughs> so if we, if, if we all agree here that we need to have a separate meeting to discuss IPEN quick views every or before the policy meeting, we can also like, we will try to work on that make sure that the policy advisors are with us and also us to discuss the IPEN quick views. So we can, yeah, so are you okay with that? I mean, I can, we will include that in our activities to have a separate like briefing for IPEN CPOs uh, before the policy meetings, okay? Yay, thank you, thank you. I see thumbs up, so that's, yes, that's agreed. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, I want to hear from Angus. Angus, um, what do you think of the regional strategy? Because um, I think if you have suggestions to be included in the regional strategy, we'll, we can also include that. So uh, do you have anything to add or comments or on the regional strategy? I just miss your voice. <laughs> we really miss you in the meeting, so please, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I don't have uh, much um, comments on the strategy. I'm, I'm, I feel fine. Yeah, and uh, we are in Hong Kong. We are working on some plastic waste and uh, single-use plastic. And also we are uh, doing some um, research and uh, we try to advocate to stop the uh, the coming incinerator because the first is uh, under construction and the second and the third may may come soon so uh, this is uh, I, 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 I see uh, our strategy also including many country also other uh, have uh, incinerator concern so I think uh, this is something we share the concern and one more point is um, uh, recently, we are developing uh, a new project. It's about uh, uh, we uh, um, to have a proper management and the treatment for the pharma uh, pharma medical waste. So the the uh, unused medicine, because uh, here uh, we have a aging problem for the population and we have a lots of uh, unused medicine. And uh, we have uh, we found some research from the university. There's uh, the water course, the river have a, a very high level of different kinds of, uh, for example, antibiotics, etc. So this is some something about the chemical uh, issues or chemical pollution we are we are looking um, into now. So the, just uh, an update for you guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Angus. I also remember that we have one PO, the Healthcare Without Harm, uh, Southeast Asia. They, they are also working on that. So if that's a suggestion, uh, we can include that also in our regional strat strategy so that it can also be included in our regional document. Okay, so can I say the one million question? <laughs> Like, are we all, do we all agree? Do we all adopt the regional strategy or if there is a, an opposition or how do, you, can I see thumbs up if you, we all agree? With yeah, the just regional strategy? thumbs up, yeah. <laughs> thumbs up in the icon and in the video if you turn on your video. <laughs> yes, we need to have that documented. So I'm going to have a screenshot <laughs> if you all agree with uh, or adopt the regional strategy. So please yeah. thumbs up. <laughs> well, let's do that. <laughs> okay, thumbs up. <laughs> Sorry, my screen is so... Okay, can, you, can we do that again? The thumbs up, please. Thank <laughs> Okay, Yay. one, two, three. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thumbs up, isn't it? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Bang the table. Thank you so much. So as, as what I have mentioned, so it's a living document. 
So it will be shared to all. And if you have additional uh, issues and strategies that you would like to be included in the regional strategy, we will take up in our regional meeting and then you will approve to be included that to include that in our regional strategy. Yay. Yay. So we have our strategy. <laughs> now we will go to the updates and reflections from those who attended the policy meetings. So I've requested some of you to share because if I, I'm tempted to request all of you, but uh, I think we don't, we have a limited time. So, but I've requested some of you and then we'll have another round in December for those who also would like to share. All right. So uh, I will now request uh, our friends from Nexus 3 to present the, the highlights and also the, their reflections on their participation to the global policy meetings. You you know who will present? Uh, it will be Sonia, me, and Nindi. <laughs> the okay. three of us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So please share, do the screen sharing if it's okay. Yeah. Uh, Sonia at uh, Nindi, uh, can yeah, you let me, let me do it? I will share the screen. Thank, Thank you, many. Okay, can you see the yes? Okay. Yeah. Please Already yeah. Yes, thank you. Uh okay. Good is afternoon. I guess so, Ibu. Is it but in the... oh it's it's PDF. Uh, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Oops. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, hello everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, this is the next three report back on three chemical and waste conferences we attended in the last uh, six months. So yeah, next first one is the intersectional process of SciChem, which took place in Nairobi at the end of February. So yeah, first of all, is as we know, uh, SciChem is the only international agreement that deals with uh, various health and environmental problem caused by the production and the use of chemicals, both existing and the new chemicals. So in this discussion, uh, there were three thematic groups similar with the IP 4.1. The names are not much different, but uh, from the IP 4.1 in Bucharest, several was uh, in the thematic groups uh, were changed, reduced, uh, and some uh, words added for the thematic group name, but in general, it is still similar to the thematic group uh, in the IP 4.1. The, the agenda is the similar to. Uh, the thematic groups consist of three uh, groups. The first is the vision, strategic, objective, targets, and the measurability. The second is about the mechanism to support the implementation of SICAM. And the last one, which is uh, the more uh, the most dynamic groups is a financial consideration, including the capacity building. Uh, yeah, it's the most dynamic groups because it is the most important part. How can all the agendas be implemented and ensure that there is uh, funding that can support all SICAM's uh, goal? Yes, next. Um, yes, the, uh, it's about the reflection and the next step of IP 4.2. Uh, first is uh, many important points have not been dealt with. The vision, the strategies, uh, the objectives and targets have not been finalized. Uh, finalized. So uh, yeah, there is still disagreement from some countries on retaining the scope of the instrument, including the chemicals and waste, as in SDG 12.4. Uh, and then on the finances for the instrument, there is a lack of agreement on the need for a dedicated global fund for the creation of mechanism that would ensure that the chemical industry contributes. Uh, this is the most fascinating part, at least for me. Uh, yeah, position on this issue are very polarized. Uh, for instance, the African region leads, Tadise was there, uh, with support from the Gulag uh, region. 
on asking for birth and new fund and new mechanism for industry contributions. While donor countries present a very unified form against uh, both major and rely, instead on weak, uh, weak capacity building uh, mechanism to operationalize, to operationalize uh, the industry participation and review existing funding mechanism. And, but uh, there's a, a positive note. There is an agreement on the creation of mechanism to support implementation that are stronger than the existing site camp and on the strategies to further involve the health, the labor issue and other sectors that are meaningful for the sound management of chemicals. Uh, then is a, uh, much of discussion focused on the need to address highly hazardous pesticides. However, there is no agreement neither on a strong target to phase out this subset of uh, pesticide, uh, nor on the creation of a global alliance for highly hazardous pesticides following the success story for the GAIOP, Global Alliance uh, on Lady Pain. The last is of the next step for the IP 4.2 is ICCM 5 uh, that will take uh, that will take place in September 25th to 29th in Bonn, Germany. And the fascinating part uh, is there will be uh, IP 4.3, two days before the ICCM 5, with the goal to finalizing text of the co-chair consolidated document to be submitted to the ICCM plenary. Ibu Yun was there too, so if you have something to add, feel free, Ibu. Okay, that's all for the SICAM IP 4.2. We will uh, go to the next conference, SPP. The time is yours, Ibu. Thank you, Son. Um, yeah, this is just a quick reflection uh, on the uh, meeting about the science policy panel. Uh, the science policy panel is uh, a forum that uh, meant to accommodate the scientific um, experts in uh, contributing to the chemicals and waste uh, forum. Uh, learning from climate issues, they have IPCC. And then uh, in the biodiversity, there is also the International Panel for Biodiversity and um, Ecosystem. Um, they call it IPBES. So um, learning from other um, big UN programs, um, chemicals and waste um, forum and delegates uh, thought that it will be, it's time to have um, the science policy panel for chemicals and, and waste. So the scope of, um, so this is the second meeting uh, in person. The first meeting was um, open-ended working group 1.1, which is hybrid, um, which is an, a virtual meeting. Uh, and we had the opportunity to participate. Um, and then the scope of, we discussed the scope of the science policy panel, uh, which should be um, the interface between uh, science and policy on chemicals and waste and pollution uh, that are not covered by uh, other bodies or other uh, convention yet. And then the objective is to provide science knowledge and capacity development to promote policy relevant support um, for the sun management of chemicals and waste, as well as to prevent pollution. Uh, these are the colleagues uh, from Asia Pacific region. Uh, we can see <laughs> familiar faces there. Next, please. Uh, I'm sorry, this is a bit small, but uh, we discussed also in that meeting the principles and the function of SPP. Um, the principles that agreed by uh, or proposed uh, by the delegates uh, at the meeting uh, includes the transparency and disclosure of conflicts of interest, especially, especially for scientists or experts who works uh, on this issue or uh, conducting studies um, covered or, or supported by industry, they have to disclose uh, their conflict of interest. Uh, and then focusing on um, environmental justice, uh, increased accessibility of information, human rights law and standard, uh, credible and um, um, demand-driven and then legitimate uh, consensual assessment, implications of uncertainties, uncertainties, and then implications of action in action, 
human rights and gender responses. Um, this principles and functions was discussed at length because people want to make sure that all these principles um, accepted. Uh, but as usual, China and Iran uh, refused to include human rights issues in the principles because they said it's irrelevant, although it's been countered back by many delegates. So the function of the SPP, um, this is just um, some ideas that discuss uh, as a thought starters. Um, it should cover five pillars. One is the horizon sc scanning. Uh, which this this week um, or since last week has been circulated by UNEP Secretariat about the horizon scanning because um, they need some inputs from people. What do you mean with horizon scanning? So there is a survey about this, and then um, in the in the first pillar um, there is the who, what, where, and when, uh, and then how. Uh, and the second pillar is the assessment, how we are going to pick the priority uh, topics. And then pillar three is about knowledge management and information sharing. And pillar four is to promote um, uh, information sharing between uh, especially low income countries, but this can be merged with uh, pillar three. And then pillar five is about the capacity building. Um, many developing countries are really supporting the pillar five, but they want to make sure that uh, their scientists also included or um, invited into the process. I think that's all. Um, the next meeting, um, next slide, please. So the SPP, sorry, um, hang on, back again a little bit. <laughs> so the SPP uh, will have um, only uh what three meetings so that the second one will be in jordan in december and then the third one or the final one will be in canada next year um can't remember whether it's may or june um so that will be the the final um the final meeting and uh we are not discussing specifically whether the SPP will have task force or working group for specific chemicals, like uh, for plastic issues, but uh, probably in the next uh, meeting, it will be discussed. Thank you. Next, uh, I will invite uh, Nindita to explain about yeah. the INC too. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ibu. Thank you, Chinki, and all good afternoon. My name is Nindi from Nexus 3. I will share a bit uh, about my reflection from INC2. So as a newbie in this international policy works, I'll give you a, a brief reflection and uh, on how the meeting goes. So, so I divide it into two. So the first one is not so good thing about the INC and the second part is the good thing from INC. So not so good things, uh, the first and the foremost about the limited participation right so in the beginning that uh, especially about the floating batch they limit us only one uh, person per organization that can enter the plenary contact group so yeah at first we were confused like uh for example like in nexus three because there are two persons so how we have uh, we should take turn between me or ibu yuyun who will enter the plenary or the contact group but luckily uh, IPEN helped us with the batch and also about the AP regional meeting that held every morning that uh, all of the NGOs cannot enter the meeting. So by, by the end of the week, me, Hemanta, and also Pretty tried to uh, go into the meeting, but in the beginning, the co-share already uh, kicked out us from the meeting and Hemanta organized uh, and wrote a letter to the AP co-share with all of the AP uh, senator about the participant uh, participation right so but I, I haven't heard about the the letter how how it goes and whether they they allow us in the next meeting or not maybe Ibu you you know from uh, Mr. Mohammed from Jordan <laughs> 
And then uh, the second about the time loss during plenary session, uh, because uh, the plan, the plenary session will be only for one day on the Friday, but because there are some delays from the countries, especially uh, like uh, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Russia, they delay the meeting until um, the plenary session until Wednesday. So yeah, time loss during plenary session is, is a really big deal. So also because of the, the countries that uh, delay the, the, pro the progress, but the weak high, there are high ambition coalition like uh, Norway and then uh, EU countries. But from my observation, uh, their uh, prison are not really strong as the low ambition countries like the uh, India or Russia. They are very strong to. Uh, I mean, these low ambition countries are very strong to to give intervention. So yeah, and I also want to uh, acknowledge that I think the AP can uh, ask from the Asia Pacific need to identify whether our countries are part of the high ambition coalition. If not, maybe we can push our country to be part of the high ambition coalition. Uh, so, and then next, during the intervention, during the country, the contact group, some member states still support for solution, for example, like Indonesia, they still support for incineration, RDF, and I think we need to still working on, working on that, and we need to identify whether Asia Pacific, some, uh, all Asia Pacific countries are still supporting for a uh, full solution. And then this is uh, one thing that, from my observation, that really make me because of this is a plastic negotiations negotiation a treaty but the event itself is not a plastic free event because i saw some members uh, member states still bring their plastic bottles to the meeting and uh, a lot of uh, ways are not separated very well so yeah it's we, i hope that the next inc meeting will be more more uh, plastic prevent. And okay, this is the good thing. <laughs> the good thing is, yay, I paint team is really amazing and cool. <laughs> I'm really, really uh, grateful to be part of the IPEN team because as a newbie of this uh, policy, international policy work, uh, IPEN really uh, took care of me and they, you guys really helpful. And you guys, uh, help me with all of the question, uh, even silly question. I mean, yeah, I mean, all of the question that uh, happened during the INC and yeah, they are support, uh, really supporting each other. Uh, yeah, so I'm really, really thank thankful for that, for the IPEN team. And of course, uh, yeah, the outcome from this meeting is, uh, the good thing is the zero draft mandate that hopefully by uh, the INC meeting, the INC tree will be uh, developed by the secretariat and with the input from observers and the member state. And yeah, I heard there will be a regional meeting before INC and uh, I heard also will be back to back with the COP Minamata regional meeting. So I don't know whether in us in Asia Pacific, uh, I can see we need to coordinate with the with the regional meeting for the INC and also COP Minamata. Maybe we should, I mean, make coordination about that for the preparation. And also there will be intersessional work on principle and scope and other potential areas that we're able to discuss during the meeting. And the last one is about the non's false solution. So during the, I want to share a bit, maybe maybe later Bu Yun want to add about that. So Nexus 3 helped the impacted community in Bali uh, because they're, uh, because the MR facilities that uh, sponsored by Danon built in their neighborhood, um, but almost 20 months, there's no response from 
than known the government. So we help we help the community to hand their open letter to Danon in Paris. And yeah, so thank you for uh, other organization like uh, Ecoways, Eileen, and Friends of the Earth to help us help us during the 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 event. Yeah. So maybe Ibu Yun or or Eileen Jam want to add something or Bella. I think that's from me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Ibu Yuyun, Sonia, and uh, Nindi. Oh, I mean, are you, are you done? Are you done with your presentation? Yes. yes. Okay. The last, yeah, the last slides. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, um, Nexus 3 is... I, I am amazed with Nexus 3 because they're not on oh, 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 they're not always funded by IPEN, but they make ways to participate in the global meetings. So thank you so much. I have to return you back. So like for example, Chinky will be attending the policy meeting. We will fund like this and this. So yeah, thank you so much. And for you to provide us updates in our meeting today. So thank you so much. All right. So from Nexus 3, I've also requested uh, Earth Thailand, I think ARM will do the presentation to update us with our participation in the BRS Cup. So ARM? Yeah, um, hi everyone. So I'm gonna share the, the PowerPoint. Just give me a second. Sure. And Pencho is here. Hi, Pencho. <laughs> Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay. Uh, can everyone see the, the slide? Yes. Okay. Sorry, it's a bit shoddy. Uh, I, I confess that I did this this morning. So, um, but I will be, be I, I hope the details are correct. Um, so, uh, Earth participated in the BRS COPS. Uh, in Geneva, but we didn't participate in the whole thing. We kind of missed out on the Rotterdam Convention for a bit, but but we did gather information from our IPIN colleagues from other regions, and we will present all three conventions here. So um, just to quickly go through each of the convention, the, the Basel Convention regulates the transboundary movement of uh, waste, hazardous waste particularly, um, using the prior informed consent procedures. But if you are a country um, that has already ratified the Basel Ban Amendment, then there is a law preventing uh, export of hazardous waste from OECD, EU, and Liechtenstein to your country, which um, Thailand um, glad, gladly did last this year. For the Rotterdam Convention, it's also regarding the prior informed consent procedures, but it's more widely targeted towards chemicals. Unlike the Basel Convention, it has no um, nothing about bans, banning substances, even though some companies seem to think that it is. But... Um, Rotterdam is just about informing the, the receiving countries what chemicals is being imported. And finally, the Stockholm Convention on POPs is going to focus on persistent organic pollutants. So it is divided into three different annexes, actually many different annexes, but the substances themselves are divided into three annexes. Annex A for banning the substance. So any POPs that are placed in Annex A is going to be banned or in production it will be eliminated. And then there's control, which is B, and then there's C, which is for unintentionally produced POPs or U POPs. So um, the meeting went on for, uh, from the 1st to 12th of May in um, Geneva. And I'm going to update for each of the convention what happened there. For the Basel Convention, the key things that IPIN was following and, and Earth as well has been the low POPs content level. So to, to put simply, the uh, when you have POPs ways, uh, transported to, to our country. Uh, the Stockholm Convention um, says that if a waste is POPs contaminated waste, it has to be disposed of in a way that would be irreversible destruction, meaning the POPs will be eliminated. eliminated. So that means going to like cement kiln or certain disposal process that is uh, regulated by the Stockholm Convention. So the question becomes, what is what? how do you define POPs waste? And that is where the low POPs content level comes in. It's the limit. Uh, of the contamination for each types of pops that would lead that waste to being defined as pops waste. 
Um, so of course, uh, African countries and IPN has been pushing for the lowest possible limits so that if a waste would be cont contaminated by just the lowest amount of pops, then it would be properly disposed of in an environmentally sound manner. Um, this has been uh, an issue that has been pushed many, many, many years now, but sadly this year, um, no serious progress. And um, just based on our participation in the technical guideline meetings, um, China has been kind of the main um, factor in terms of saying that we cannot accept the new um, low pops content level at the moment because they need to do more and more um, economic evaluation, social evaluation. So um, even things like SCCPs, where uh, the, 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 it, it, was, it wasn't the lowest possible content level that was being proposed, even the middle level was still um, kind of rejected um, by China. So the issue that I also see is um, there is a mostly silence from the Southeast Asian region, even though we are some of the top receivers of POPs waste. So it's, um, it's, it's an issue because we sometimes don't, don't see many of our delegates participating in these kind of technical meetings. Um, IPN, of course, did a, a lot of campaign on this. Uh, we have a side event on all POPs content level. And uh, we did this um, thing where uh, we dressed up as chicken and then kind of because you found pops in eggs and then saying that you have to like have no pop content level. So we did this for um, two days, another one doing the PCB fair. Um, it was a little bit touch and go because initially the, the, the location, the, the, the meeting venue wasn't happy, too happy with our action here because they think that if we use this method to promote our side event and other side events will we do the same thing and they didn't want us to do it. Uh, but eventually it worked out fine and 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 uh, the, the photographers loved our action so it, it, it made some headlines in uh, in Geneva. Um, with regard to the Stockholm Convention it's actually a very important um, uh, round of the meeting because there are many chemicals that are being proposed uh, Mesocyclor, UV328, and Decorane Plus. So the good news is all three substances were listed in Annex A, uh, which is which means the banning of those substances. Mesocyclor is actually the first to be banned. I think it was like the first day of the meeting, Mesocyclor was banned and without any exemption. So that's a big win for all the uh, POs that are working with pesticides and all these kind of chemicals. Also, I think from my conversation with uh, uh, certain members of the Pesticides Action Network, that Methoxychlor has already been banned in EU and the US, so it's not surprising that it is banned now so easily. So um, the, the kind of more uh, contentious points are the UV328 and the Korean Plus. Um, from the start, it was quite clear that we, are, we were moving towards Annex A. We were moving towards banning both substances. It was the issue of exemption that was being um, discussed as well as the labeling of these things because if we are to ban it, then we need to label which materials contain these things and we, we get a lot of oppositions. Um, the specific exemption for UV328 and the Korean Plus are varied and there are many types of things in there. But uh, one that is very interesting to us is motor vehicles repair part. So if you, you all know that like Stockholm Convention doesn't allow for recycling, but then there is a way that they say that it's replacement parts and repair, which is, um, they say it's not recycling, but I think we would argue otherwise, for example. So the, the specific exemption for UV328 and the Korean Plus was actually allowed for motor vehicles part and um, replacement parts. It would be allowed to, these parts that contain the Korean Plus would be allowed to be used until the end of its use life or 2044, whichever comes first. This means that potentially this contamination could be there for another 20 years, which is, that's the kind of um, sadder dimension of this, even though we were able to put it in Annex A. Um, IPEN also made a lot of argument for proper labeling of uh, materials containing the Korean Plus. And um, one of the key thing is Japan is very much against this. Um, it, there's an interesting dynamic because we know that China is about to ban the Korean Plus already. So it's no surprise that they are not that vocal about it. But um, Japan was very protective of it. So I don't know, may maybe some people were, were kind of guessing that maybe Japan was going to pick up the production of the Korean Plus. But uh, especially with regard to Thailand, and I think for other POs in this region as well, Japan is a top exporter of motor vehicle parts to Thailand. So um, it's also possible that they just, they know that many motor vehicle parts contain DP and it's important that they protect uh, this part of the interest. 
And again, with this um, issue, um, the, the, the Korean past issue, Southeast Asian voice is still not as prominent, I think, as other regions. We, we attended uh, the, the Asia Pacific meeting um, regularly, and it's usually um, Saudi Arabia, Iran, India, and China and Japan that are the most vocal groups. They're the ones who's drafting the statements. I, I think this is probably very similar to many other international meetings, but Southeast Asia is not well represented. Um, uh, we, we we do thank the Indonesian delegates because one time that Earth made an, uh, a statement that um, there should be more Southeast Asian voices in the meeting. Um, the Indonesian delegate actually supported our statement. Um, another th thing that Earth uh, did uh, is to um, present the results of IPEN where we found the Korean past in the blood of e-waste workers and as well as in the environment. So that was a big kind of... Uh, release of the report that was trying to push for the banning of the Korean Plus. Um, P here made a statement at the plenary. Uh, I don't remember which day, I think it was 4th of May. And then there's a, uh, there's a side event on that. The side event was, was successful. Um, uh, we have the government of Norway uh, participating and making a statement, I think, in, I think as part of the high ambition coalition, uh, because the Korean plus and these substances are found in plastic. So the government of Norway was there to kind of say that we need to ban all these substances and also urging other delegates to join the, the HAC. Uh, finally, there's also the, the Rotterdam Convention. Um, the, the key part is that they, they enlisted Turbofoss, which is um, it's not something that I, I, I am familiar off with, but I think it's an insecticide. Regarding the the introduction of Annex 8, which um, if you're not familiar, um, the Rotterdam Convention says that any chemicals listed in Annex 3 would have to be would have to go through the prior informed consent process. But in order for any chemicals to be listed in Annex 3, uh, all parties must agree under a consensus. So everyone must be okay with it. But then this means that certain parties would veto the, the, the result. For example, with regard to asbestos, uh, I, I think Russia was one of the countries that was always saying that we cannot add asbestos to Annex A, Annex, Annex 3, sorry. So this past year, Australia and some other countries like the Maldives actually came up with a way to circumvent that, uh, proposing an introduction of Annex 8, which would say that any country, any substances that are pending Annex 3 inclusion, um, if enough countries agree for it, then it would be included in Annex 8, and any countries that ratify Annex 8 would just follow the PIC procedures within that Annex 8 group. So it's like creating, um, it's not a, a complete solution for sure, but it's a, it's a way to get around the veto and to protect the countries within the Annex 8 ratification. And this issue, I think from our following, um, it's been controversial from the start. Uh, we went to the meeting, the regional Asia Pacific meeting in Bangkok, and the lobbyists were there from the start to try to prevent the inclusion of Annex 8. So the result came out in May 12th. So that, that was after uh, Earth already left Geneva, but we were following this issue on the IPIN, um, uh, the IPIN chat group. And we heard that because in order to list a new Annex, there would be need to be three-fourths approval. That's 75% of the parties. Uh, Russia tried to appeal the voting process twice to say that we don't want to vote, we don't want to vote, and uh, but but it, the vote took place. Uh, it just came very close. Seventy percent of the countries voted yes for a new annex, um, but that's not seventy five percent. So the list uh, thing for the new annex is now rejected. Sadly, not, sadly, but I think it's not the end of the line. I understand that. I think some of the IPN POs that are deeply engaged in this issue are probably thinking of ways to um, move forward with this. Yeah, I think, I think that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Arm and P also. Thank you for updates. Great job on uh, your active participation in the DRS clubs. So yeah, okay. So thank you again. So one of the concerns that Arm mentioned during the DRS clubs uh, meetings was that uh, there was always, there has been always silence with the Asia Pacific uh, delegates and also from the southeast and east our oh, southeast asian delegates during the policy meetings and i think that's a very valid uh, concern so for now i have requested two from our two of our friends to share with us how do they engage with the 
government delegates, whether government delegates during the policy meetings before, after, or before, or during, and after the policy meetings. So, yeah, so first let us hear from Bella, Bella of ISEL. Bella, can you share with us? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Shanti. Um, so during the INC2 in Paris, we got a, I mean, ISEL as an organization has a very interesting opportunity to join the delegation of Republic of Indonesia as part of the <clears throat> negotiator in Paris. Um, it was, uh, I can say that it was an interesting opportunity in the first place because we can directly engage with the delegation in the first place. So actually, um, it is not a very short process in order to join the delegation because uh, I still get this kind of opportunity because we have a great relationship with the head of delegation before. Um, and it is a very, very long relationship that we have that we try to establish, I think for almost like 20 or 30 years <laughs> of our existence. And then um, the other thing is, um, uh, we can join the delegation in the first place because we tried uh, to see the gap on their knowledge and understanding on the INC process as a whole. And we try to give them recommendations specifically on that gap. Uh, so we are not trying to tell them about the core obligation because they already have uh, a subtle understanding on that, for example, about the reduction of virgin plastic material or about the incineration for, um, or about the waste management itself. But we try to see the gap, uh, what kind of knowledge that they need in the first place uh, to support them toward the INC. And we saw the opportunity to give them some kind of uh, knowledge input, especially on uh, the means of implementation. And through our inputs uh, in the means of implementation, especially, uh, they invited us to join the delegation uh, in Paris. There are like several reflections on my side because it is not an easy process, I guess, <laughs> during Paris. I, I think you can also understand how hard it is. Um, the first reflection I think is to, we need to understand um, the political dynamic within the delegation, how each ministry will have a different position in one obligation and how they try to find a convergence um, within that issue. For example, for Indonesia delegation, specifically about the reduction of virgin plastic material. So we can see there is a, some kind of switch of position from what they said in the written submission, because at first uh, in the written submission, they seem to agree with the reduction of virgin plastic material. Um, but uh, before the INC, the Ministry of Industry come uh, with a different position uh, because in our, in our government, there is a huge support to increase the petrochemical industry uh, in Indonesia. So the Ministry of Industry tried to come uh, with a different idea and they said, we cannot, we cannot reduce the virgin plastic material. We cannot agree with that obligation. And we also cannot agree with the idea that the government need to reduce even the single use plastic product. Um, and during the process of negotiation, I can see that there is uh, some kind of also um, a negotiation within the, the delegation itself, within the Minister of Environment as the, as, a, as the head of delegation and also the Ministry of Industry that they try to find a convergence between them. And that's why through that uh, negotiation, in the end of the day, uh, when they try to deliver the, state, the statement of Indonesia on their core obligation, we can see that there's a different because finally they say that they cannot agree to reduce the virgin plastic materials, but um, they agree that there will be some kind of um, 
um, what is the term? I forgot. Um, there is some kind of control measure on the virgin plastic material um, production in the first place. And then uh, the second reflection would be the industry's influence is real, I think, in the negotiation. Um, because, for example, in Indonesia delegation, um, it, is, it is not only NGO that can join the delegation, but also the industry, which consists of you know, the recycling industry and also the petrochemical industry. And I can see uh, maybe in Nairobi, it will also happen maybe in terms of our delegation. And also maybe it will also happen in other delegation. And the third reflection uh, would be um, how I try to influence the process itself. Um, it is not an easy process because if, for example, I sell, try to influence from within the delegation, we cannot have a huge hope for our government to have a revolutionary change of position. That's why it comes to the fourth reflection that I have. The decision to join the delegation or not is back to the strategy of HPOs. Uh, the strategy to match the delegation from outside of the delegation has the same importance, I think with the strategy to influence the delegation from inside. Because uh, without the demand that created from the campaign outside of the delegation, it wouldn't be possible for a person who tried to influence the process from inside to move the needle, to move the position of the government a little bit. And finally, uh, maybe a little bit comment on what Nilita already said before. Um, so about the high ambition coalition, I also think that we need to nudge our government uh, to join the high ambition coalition because on the Southeast Asia, um, there, are, there are only Southeast Asia and East Asia, there are only Japan and Republic of Korea that join the hack, which means we still got a bunch of countries that they are not joining the hack. And also today, there will be a regional meeting um, on AT, on INC, that will talk about international work, what is, uh, especially on what is the content that will be talked or discussed during the intersessional work that will happen in 30 minutes, I guess. That's all, Chinti, for me. Uh, thank you very much uh, for, for, for the time. Thank you. Thank you, Bella. This is really, I'm learning a lot from your sharing also. So it's not easy. It will take a long process, but bit by bit, you are trying to influence your government decision. And then, and I hope that, uh, and I think that's also a challenge for all of us, all of us working uh, in, with our national delegates, but hopefully we will be able to influence them also. So thanks again, Bella. So imagine you are a government delegate to the IMC. That's, that's a great effort. Um, so from Bella, I will also request Eileen, Miss Eileen, to also share the efforts, uh, her efforts of, you know, charming the delegates. And uh, it's not also, I'm sure that she will also, uh, we will also learn from her. Go ahead. Okay, so actually, I, I contest the word the charming of the delegates, no? Uh, because uh, that's that's uh, not, not effective. <laughs> okay, so what we did in the Philippines, the, the Philippines uh, experience with, with it comes to delegates, um, we, we are very vocal in, in the uh, among our among our delegates that uh, we, we complain. We complain that in every negotiations, they have different representatives and delegates. Um, and there's no, no focal one, no? So now, um, they have, um, for, for the INC one, they have different, uh, different uh, delegates. Then uh, for the INC two, uh, they have um, a focal person already, no? So, um for the INC one, what they did is that uh, what what we did is we organized uh, with with the help of, of of other groups in the Philippines is that we organize uh, a dialogue with them. No, 
but uh, just like any other government, they do not want to commit. No, so that's the first attempt during the INC one, and then don't by the INC two. What we did, uh, um, since there is already a focal person, is that we and and we know that the the focal person already. Um, so we kept. Um, I kept on messaging him. I have his his numbers. Uh, so I I texted him. I Viber call him. I Viber message him, and then eventually I asked him to have a meeting with the CSOs in the Philippines, especially those that we will be joining the INC2. Uh, because we don't want uh, anything bad to happen during the, deli the, the, uh, the deliberation in INC2. So might as well um, talk with the NGOs or the CSOs in the Philippines. So uh, before our discussion, um, the Philippine delegate shared with us immediately the position paper of the Philippines for and asking CSOs for our inputs. So, um, so right there and then we <laughs> we put our inputs, no, and then we also asked. Then we had the meeting. We discussed some of our issues. Some of the uh, we discussed the IPEN views, and then we agreed to submit the position paper of the Philippines, the 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 combined one. The combined position paper of the the Philippine delegate, uh, the government, and the CSOs, uh, um, uh, four days before the INC two, because they told us that uh, ah we will we really need to get the position paper because we will still have it vetted by the Department of Foreign Affairs and also by the Department of, of uh, Environment and National Resources, the DNR. So we we had it, we we gave it to to them the the um position paper Philippine position paper with the comments from the CSOs and inputs from the CSO. So come during the the INC two, ah we keep on eye and eye on you. <laughs> it's the right system. Uh, is it um oh, I put your eyes <laughs> something like that. No. So before they they we we know we know their their flight arrivals. <laughs> So the, we are. We are, I'm already monitoring. Where are you? Do you have a safe flight and something like that? Well, then, um, come, come INC. I uh, come the proper plenary. Um, I immediately. Um, most of the civil societies in the Philippines immediately went to them, and just to just to tell them that um, we are here. We are watching you. Uh, so we could have some. Uh, same position, you know, so so that's that's it. Uh, and then on the second day, we asked them to have a meeting with all of us, uh, Philippine delegates who are in Paris. So we had a dinner. You know? We had a dinner, and then we asked them how can uh, how can we be of help to you, delegates? So because we are. Um, we are. We would we like to extend our our help. Yes, it's a Vietnamese dinner, <laughs> so we would like to extend our hand or uh, to help you delegates from the Philippines. So so they they now they are asking um um some some issues some some of the options paper content. So they are really open now. So that is what and then they're asking for a debriefing every dinner. I don't know if it's about the debriefing or if it's because of the free dinner. <laughs> okay. So 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 we we're having brief debriefing every every day after after each session just to ask them. Um but the the the, the we had the Viber group so we're just doing it in the Viber group. So we're just asking them um how do you how do you see what's been happening um, in today's session and uh, and and answering all of their um, questions as well? So imagine they doesn't know about waste trade happening in the Philippines. Uh, they doesn't know also about cement kiln because one of the delegates uh, that we did that were not uh, introduced to us and were not present. Um, during those times that we are there, is from the plastic credit. So they don't know what plastic credit is. So so we we orient them on that. So and then after um, 
we were really we're really monitoring them no so even after the INC2 we are um scheduling a debriefing and a way forward with them because uh it is one of the agreements that we had during the INC2 that uh, we should be continuously sharing materials reading materials um actually even for the minamata they are asking for reading materials and then uh so come INC3 we will be doing again the same thing so oh so <laughs> so we 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 what, what we're projecting is that uh, they could be we could we CSOs could be of help to them we could guide them we could provide them um learning materials um we could be of we could be your assistant so so we could uh, really influence them so that works for us in the philippines thanks Finky. yay thank you keep on watching and engaging with our body very good so that's what i've learned from you okay, thank you so okay so we've heard, we've heard from two uh po's how they engage how do they engage with the government de government delegates to the policy meetings. So now we will also request two more. So two more to also share. Um, this one would be like, how do they keep their organization updated in terms of um, updates on the meeting? And then how they also uh, update their network uh, in terms of the results of the meeting. So first, I would like to request Jam, Jam Lorenzo of Mindex. Jam, go ahead. Uh, yes, Miss Chinky, I'll just share my screen. Uh, but uh, I'm disabled from sharing, Miss Chinky. Oh, okay, I'll just share my screen. Uh, PowerPoint. Okay, so uh, I already read the uh, I already saw the presentations from uh, Nexus. Uh, so I already know that they will be discussing the results of the meetings that we attended. So this presentation will be focusing more on uh, ban toxics work around some of these global policy meetings, as well as how uh, the IPEN ecosystem has helped us uh, throughout these processes. So. Uh, like uh, most of us, like most of our NGOs, uh, our global policy work uh, centers around a few key activities. One is the provision of support to our country delegates. This includes uh, is uh, providing them updates regarding issues, helping them with some logistical support uh, and uh, discussions on NGO and country positions or lobbying. So uh, as seen is a picture of uh, me with uh, the chief of the hazardous waste management section, as well as the consulate general for uh, environmental issues. Uh, this was for, I think, one of the Minamata cops before, and uh, we were discussing the country position. So this is something that we do a lot. Uh, uh, we also do some coordination work. So we, uh, during the INC, uh, we coordinated meetings between the PH delegation uh, with a uh, with hedge support, uh, focusing on uh, traceability and transparency discussions, as well as uh, we also uh, set up a meeting between the Philippine delegations and the Malaysian country delegates to discuss uh, uh, some key positions that they might be cooperating on. Uh, even uh, even in meetings where we are not present, uh, we can sometimes still provide support. Uh, this happened during the BRS conventions where we coordinated meetings between uh, Hedge Support and SSNC and our Philippine government delegates. Uh, this again was a discussion on transparency and traceability uh, in chemicals and the products. So next slide. Uh, uh, during a lot of these meetings, we also conducted uh, awareness raising and of course, like some of our partners here, uh, we have written submissions. So especially during the INC in Paris, we had uh, daily media, social media updates, as well as traditional media engagements. So as you can see on the picture on the right, uh, is an example of an interview that I had uh, regarding updates on the plastic, uh, on the Global Plastics Treaty. So we also held a nature walk against plastics pollution right after INC2. This was held in Bulacan, Philippines. So we had a lot of uh, student organizations as well as uh, advocate organizations come join us for the uh, nature walk. Uh, so we also have a lot of written submissions, uh, which we 
uh, provide to our uh, to our delegates. So we uh, for INC, uh, including INC two, INC one, as well as the OEWG, we had our position submitted directly to them, and uh, we also had a BT submission submission for the UNEP SPP, which we submitted maybe three days right before the deadline. So. Uh, so here's just a short discussion on how IPEN has uh, provided us uh, some support during all of these activities. So of course, the preparatory activities, the online meetings and the debriefs have been important sources of uh, updated information, especially regarding key issues and network positions. Uh, this is especially important for someone like me who works on a lot of issues and I, I might not be able to read all of the uh, pertinent documents. So having all of these uh, preparatory meetings and discussions have been a big help uh, towards us crafting our positions and crafting how our strategy when engaging with government stakeholders. So uh, one good thing about IPEN is also the sharing of information within the network. Uh, my experience during the UNEP SPP, the daily meetings uh, became venues for synergy and strategy formulation on how we could discuss uh, certain things with our government stakeholders, who needs to talk to who, or what kinds of topics should we focus on. So these have been important venues for that. And of course, IPEN, IPEN publications and tips have been helpful in developing uh, Bantoxic's work and our written submissions. No? So uh, IPEN publications, especially on plastics, have been important considerations for us when we developed our position papers. And uh, for written submissions, uh, for those who are members of the SPP WhatsApp group, uh, Therese sent us uh, some very helpful tips for the development of the SPP uh, submissions, and we actually uh, reviewed uh, some of those tips and incorporated them with our submission to the SPP. And uh, IPEN publications are have been very helpful, especially in hallway discussions with uh, other delegates, other organizations, or stakeholders who might be wanting to discuss plastics issues or SPP issues with us. And uh, of course, IPEN publications have been really helpful for our media interviews. Uh, if you if you are familiar with the IPEN publication on plastics, which was released uh, in November last year, uh, there is a line there that states that 99% basically of the plastics we have uh, come from fossil fuels. And that's something that I have said in maybe two or three interviews already. So. Uh, that's a big support for us and uh, and our crafting of our positions. And uh, here's a picture of us at the SPP. Uh, I think uh, one important thing that uh, IPEN has provided, uh, not only for Band Toxics, but for all of our organization is uh, the mentorship and the camaraderie. Uh, the mem uh, for example, for mentorship, uh, every time we meet, we meet at meetings, uh, uh, at the Eileen from... Uh, Echo Waste uh, has always provided me with tips and a lot of insider information. So that's a form of mentorship. And uh, another form is our camaraderie. Uh, these meetings can be very stressful at times. So it, it's been very helpful to see friendly faces uh, along the hallways and in the discussions. So uh, that concludes our short presentation. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much, Jam. Um... Yeah, <laughs> thank you. So from Jam, we'll also request one more to to also provide their updates and uh, share how do they share the information and updates to their networks. So I I'm requesting Jia Cheng from Jinzen Zero Waste to also uh, give us or share with us uh, um, briefly about their reflections. Thank Go ahead, Jia Cheng. You're on mute. Yeah, thanks, Chunky. As Tianjing uh, from uh, Nature Fields meant to share with us, but she had she's having some network problems. So I will uh, share some uh, partners' movements in China instead. Uh, personally, I joined the SPB with Chunky and uh, almost everyone, and uh, Malda and Tianjing from Shenzhen Zero Waste, they joined the BRS meeting and we had the side meeting in the BR, BRS. Uh, also about the INC2, we, jo we joined the INC2 also, we invited uh, some partners from 
uh, Pacific Environment Foundation and the partners from Greenpeace and uh, China's Energy Department to join the INC2 uh, with us. And uh, I want to share some detailed information about uh, BRS and the INC2. Uh, for the BRS, uh, Mao Da and uh, Tian, Tian Jing and other three Chinese uh, speakers, we, we hosted a side session together and we shared the China's experience in pesticide and uh, packaging waste management, including the recycling experience of pesticide bottles. And uh, in INC2, uh, we have some partners who joined the INC2. Um, uh, I, I learned from them that uh, during the meeting, the, the main process, we talked, we talked a lot, the, the meeting talked about the voting rules. Uh, the, the key point is whether the decision on key issues can be passed with the majority approval. But there is no conclusion after the INC2 about the voting rules. And uh, also, uh, we, have, we, 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 are, we are preparing some uh, materials for the INC3, like we, we hope the INC3 can talk more about the disposal of the waste. Uh, and personally, I want to share some uh, information about uh, my work, like I went to California last uh, month and uh, visited some local NGOs in California. And uh, I learned from them that uh, the California government launched a new no law that's, that bans the uh, fossil based waste to, to, to that bans the fossil based waste burning, uh, including plastics. And which I think which will make it very difficult for the incinerators to make a profit if they cannot burn the plastics. So I think it is a it's an experience for us to uh, uh, share. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Chunky. Sorry, I didn't prepare for the presentation, so it's very short and simple. Hopefully, we can have more communication in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Cha Cheng, for a very short notice you have shared substantially about your participation, uh, not only the participation of Shenzhen Zerways, but also other POs from China. And uh, thank you for letting me know. I didn't know actually that there were POs uh, from China participated in the INC2. So that's a very good news also. I will share that also with ITEN Secretariat. So thank you again. So we're now done with the updates and reflections of POs uh, who attended the global policy meetings. And it's, I mean, I'm grateful for your reflections, for the highlights that you've shared. And hopefully we can work more on influencing the position of our government delegations to really advance our uh, mission of ensuring that the Global Plastics Treaty will really address not just the waste pollution, but also the chemical issues on plastics. So thank you again. So we will now proceed to the line of, line of activities for the year. So, um, but before that, we have scheduled webinars from July to December, and then including the activities of the IPEN Youth Focus in our region. So this time I will request Mark of EBS to also share their line of activities. They're one of the POs who also who are also implementing the IPEN Youth Focus project. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, gosh. We can we can see your presentation. Can you I'm having a technical problem right now because it's raining heavily here at the office. So please bear with me. I'm so sorry. Uh, here, uh, can you see my presentation now? Yes, yes, Mark. Yes, it's just a very short presentation. It's, the, it's just only 50 slides. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, so I will just be presenting you know, some out uh, some lined up activities for the Youth for a Toxic Spray Future campaign. You know, uh, we were able to 
uh, be granted no with with support from IPEN for our for this campaign. So next week we will be having our zero waste youth convergence 2023 uniting actions for waste and toxic uh, free future. So young leaders from different academic institutions, youth organizations, and activists will be gathered for the Zero Waste Youth Convergence, Uniting Actions for Waste and Toxic Free. So the topics uh, include waste to energy incineration and its impact to health and the environment. Also, toxics, waste, and hazardous chemicals impact the human health and environment as well. And we will be uh, inviting, actually, we already invited Dr. Won Kim from the Won Jin Institute. And he already agreed you know, to give his presentation for the studies that we have conducted you know, on pesticides and harmful cosmetics in Asia-Pacific uh, countries. And thank you, Dr. Won, for uh, graciously you know, uh, accepting our invitation. So thank you for that. And our next uh, activity is for the Let's Safe Mural Painting. This will be in partnership with, again, Youth Organization and the Davao Parks Board. Uh, there will be a mural painting activity that will be conducted using Let's Safe Paints you know, in, in selected uh, parks here in, in Davao City. And the last uh, activity for, for this project or for this, uh, yeah, for this project is the as a part of a culmination of the series of activities because this will be also conducted in partnership with uh, Nexus and ICEL. So there will be a an IPEN C Youth uh, POs meeting you no know, on on August for the culmination of the activity. And this during this activity we will be presenting the uh, outputs or the activities that we have conducted all throughout the the implementation period. So I think that's all for, for me and thank you so much. It's just a very short presentation. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Mark. So from Mark, may I also request um, Bella? Is it you, Bella? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it's Bella. A, okay. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Bella. Go ahead, yeah. 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 Um, so it will be a very short um, explanation too for me. So there are two activities that will be conducted uh, by POC in Indonesia. The first one will be conducted by uh, ISEL and also Nexus. Uh, we, we will try to conduct an offline seminar to increase the understanding on youth, especially university students, uh, on the connection between chemical, plastic, and health. So beforehand, actually, I have opportunities uh, to talk about plastic in front of uh, university students, but many of them see plastic as plastic without the understanding about toxic chemicals on it. And I also think that this seminar, uh, between the combination between Nexus 3 that have an expertise on the scientific side of plastic and also ISA expertise on policy side, could make this seminar really interesting. So we plan to make the seminar happen before INC, uh, but we couldn't execute the event on time. So we plan to move it to July. On addition, we also have uh, Gita Pertu in Solo, who also conducted activity to increase the awareness of food producers on pesticides and, and chemical fertilizer, and try to nudge them to prioritize the use of organic fertilizer. Uh, and also Gita Pertu, we will encourage the development of a group of young people who have the same vision on environmental issue, especially the young food producers. The activity itself will consist of education on waste management and also river cleanup near the rice fields. And it, it, the activity itself will also conducted in July. I think that's all. Chinti uh, from Indonesia POS uh, on the youth side. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bella. So I'm going to share my screen again to also uh, briefly uh, share other uh, line up activities. So we will still be working with other POs who would like to co organize the webinars. So, like for example, one is on PRTR. So, there's one target webinar on PRTR with possible co organizers, Nexus 3 or Toxic Swats Japan. That's, that's going to be sometime in August or September. So, if your PO would like you'll be interested to also co-organize this webinar, just let us know. I think Nexus 3 has already um, prepared this, so IPNC will be co-organizing, and then we'll have more 
uh, webinars on PRTR uh, next year and next next year. The second one is uh, the webinar on Greenpeace report on recycling. I think you've read about or you've heard about this, uh, the Greenpeace report on uh, toxic recycling. So there's a target webinar. We're just working with the Greenpeace on their availability, so possibly in August. Then the other one is the webinar on PFAS. So we are coordinating with YITCA uh, and other POs in the region, especially those who are involved in PFAS on protein and PFAS on food packaging projects. So possibly on August 16 or 17, that's the world or international world food day. So we'll be working on that schedule. And then, the, of course, the IPNC Youth Focus Activities that it is ISO Nexus and Gita Perti we are co uh, coordinating. We hope that if there's a possibility for us to join you online, just let us know. We can also join you online and we'll invite also more youth in our region. And also for our year end meeting uh, to be, but tentatively December 19, that's after the INC 3 and the SPT meeting. So that's all from my end. I really would like to share my IBLP uh, experience in the US, but because the time it's already, well, we're over 32 minutes now. So I will just email it and I can share it with you maybe in December <laughs> or we can schedule another uh, um, sharing session with you. But now uh, I will request Yu Yun, Ibu Yu Yun to give the, Closing message. Um, sorry, Shinti. There's one more issue if I, if I could just raise. Oh, sure, sure. Go ahead before we give to you. Yes? Um, yeah, uh, if this is just for like a, a kind of informal request from Earth, if it's possible that we want, we want to learn more about the PRTR system in the countries in Southeast Asia, um, in the region of ASEAN, it would be good if. Uh, we don't have to share it now, of course, because the time is up, but uh, maybe uh, you can send, if some of you have any materials on that, you can send it to the chat group, the WhatsApp group, or the emails. It would be great. I already got some information from Shinki last time about Japan, Korea, and that's great. So thank you, and I think that's it. Thank you, Arm. Yeah, I will send an invitation if you want to co-organize the webinars through emails and also for the PRTR uh, concerns, if you have campaign like I will send an email and you can reply. Yes, so the closing message. <laughs> it's always more than one and a half hours, Chinky. You should schedule it for two oh. hours so, or two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah, sorry. But it's a good <laughs> problem, right? It's lovely. It's lovely because uh, we could hear all the sharings from other colleagues. That's that's uh, inspiring and motivating. Okay, I won't be long. I just want to share my screen if I'm allowed. Yeah, I can do it. Okay. Um, yeah, you can see it. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for our colleagues who are participating in, in this meeting today. Uh, I just want to uh, give you something to think about, <laughs> to think about. You had already a lot to think, but um, just to remind and refresh ourselves that um, according to UNSCAP, um, the Asia Pacific regions are consisted of 40 countries, okay? And home of 4.3 billion of people. Um, and uh, our POs are only <laughs> on this side. Um, yeah, so although it's uh, Southeast Asia and East Asia, we have already had uh, colleagues, uh, IPEN POs in um, nine countries so far. Um, but I think it will be interesting to have some more colleagues to join uh, from other uh, countries like uh, Timor-Leste, uh, for instance, um, and Laos probably, or Myanmar, uh, if we could uh, approach them. Um, because some projects uh, like um, the new one I just heard from Pain Chom about PRTR 
uh, there's a project also in, in Myanmar or Laopedia. Uh, so that would be great if we could uh, uh, reach out our colleagues there. And our region is the producer of um, plastics and 30% located in China and then 4% in Japan and 17% the rest of Asia, meaning Indonesia, Malaysia. Um, so our region is uh, quite big and usually we are comparable with um, the African region, which is consisted of 55 countries. Um, but although our region is on the east and southeast, um, people sometimes, how should I say, do not recognize the leaderships of Southeast Asia and East Asia because the cultural differences, I guess. And many of our delegates also sometimes they are so quiet um, in the big meeting. So I think we have to support and provide balance in terms of voices, you know. Um, oh, in addition to that, um, this is the producers of uh, basic chemicals. Uh, there are 32 basic chemicals produced globally um, that will be used for other products or uh, manufacture, uh, manufacturing uh, industry. And uh, three of them located in um, East Asia. Um, this chart was taken from the presentation of CL when uh, CL and IPEN introduced the idea of um, financial levies for um, to fund the chemicals and waste uh, programs, um, tax them with, not tax, they try to avoid the words tax because every country have different um, definitions of tax. So probably levy from their sales, only 0.1% that should be enough to fund all the chemicals and waste program. This is just to give you an idea. And um, according to Statista, um, the, the sales of global chemicals industry um, revenue is increasing. And uh, Asia Pacific also uh, took part of this and more than 50% of the global chemicals industry sales is actually taking place in Asia. So that's worth to, to think about. Um, but at the same time, our region also famous <laughs> uh, for the source of plastic pollutions and the river pollutions are located in our region mostly. Um, and RDF too. <laughs> so the blue one is as SRF, solid refuse fuel, that's from uh, agriculture waste and so on. And RDF is refuse derived fuel, that's from waste mainly. And it has been traded in our region for a while since um, probably in 10 years uh, already. Um, but also the threat um, of our ecosystem um, also, um, influenced by many factors, but in this map, I just want to share the ecosystem sensitivity mapping and mercury risk that is um, released or produced by our colleagues from the Biodiversity Research Institute. Currently, we are having a project with them um, to monitor the mercury in the ecosystem, including in biodiversity. So the color shows uh, the degree of um, risk and this is um, mercury pollutions and biodiversity sensitivity, um, they overlay it. Um, Indonesia has a, a yellow orangey and it means uh, Indonesia has both high inputs of mercury and also um, high sensitivity in terms of ecosystem and biodiversity risk. Um, on pesticides, our region also uh, have so, <laughs> many colors. Um, the darker the colors uh, shows um, the pesticide use uh, for uh, for cropland areas in kilogram per hectare. So we could see the darker colors is the higher. Um, so in China um, and then in Malaysia, it's quite high. Um, and this is also give us more um, motivation 
to work um, more and collaborate more with other colleagues in other network. And this, uh, with this opportunity, I would like also to introduce uh, our new network in Indonesia. We call it Pesticide Alert Network, uh, leads by uh, colleagues by our colleague from Gita Pertiwi, uh, Nexus Three, and then we have another group of colleagues from uh, TPOLS, uh, Transnational Palm Oil uh, Labors. So they are focusing on uh, labors and workers uh, in palm oils. Uh, we had a couple of calls uh, and discussions, what we are going to do and what will be our priority. We will introduce you officially once we have finalized our concept notes about uh, our network. But this will uh, strengthen um, the Pesticide Action Network Asia Pacific and also to support some ideas uh, to face out pesticides in our region. So lastly, um, in the identification of um, Southeast Asia regional uh, um, uh, campaign or, or activities and programs, uh, it has already identified um, uh, in that uh, some charts about the critical minerals. And uh, in the last three years, we've been bombarded with uh, smelters industry to support renewable energy globally. And uh, fortunately, unfortunately, um, in our regions also, we have a lot of resources, for instance, lithium, cobalt, uh, copper, nickel, and manganese that support the batteries for electric uh, vehicles um, um, all over the world. And uh, I think my, my observation is that in the next five years, in the next 10 years, renewable energy issue um, will have different phase. You know, we thought that renewable energy is good for the environment, but if the renewable energy um, transition from coal will create another, <laughs> another, um, critical issues, we have to be ready. And uh, it will be good if we all can work together also to watch um, this development. So that's all from me. I I actually prepared this menti, but we don't have time, but we can circulate it via email probably, uh, and then share it later, just to get your comments and, and your appreciations about this meeting. Um, that's all from me, Chinky. Thank you, everyone. Oh my, yay! Come to an end. But before we go, we say goodbye. We have also uh, Yung Yun is here from Sharps, and uh, tonight she will share during a webinar uh, organized by IPEN and uh, IPEN and UNEP. So I hope you can also join. So this is the webinar I'm talking to you about. So hopefully you can also register and join this meeting. This Yun Yuan will be there to share their work, their experience on chemicals uh, and wastes in, in their country, in their organization. Uh, probably yeah. you should uh, share it again in our uh, WhatsApp. Okay, all right. So thank yeah. you again so thank much. You. So every meeting is a learning session for me and it's so heartwarming to always see you all people yeah. and your good work. Thank you so much. So we had our photo thank opportunity you. earlier. I will try to cut and paste some of you, Yun Yun and Penchum. I think the two of you are not in the picture earlier. So I will just so to make sure that all of us uh, in the meeting are in the picture. So don't say thank you so much. <laughs> Thank this you. is the first two hours. I'll take a yeah, picture of Frenchum. Hang on. One, two, three. Yeah, yeah. One, two, three. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Uh, arm is just a uh, pop up. <laughs> bye, everyone. Bye, bye. 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 bye Thank you. Bye, bye. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. I Bye. Enjoy your birthday celebrations, you and, and hubby. Okay. <laughs> bye, bye bye. Take care, everyone. And also, Shang, Shang, thank you so much for your work. Yes, you know, you just said the bill. <laughs> Welcome. I mean, good luck to your work. Shang, thank you.
Did you send the bill? <laughs> Thank you so much. This is this meeting is more than two hours, so please uh, incorporate it in the bill. Thank you so much. <laughs>